Hi, I'm Father Bill Holtzinger, the pastor of St. Anne Catholic Church in Grants Pass, Oregon, and here we are in our church, and uh, today I've been asked by our children in our faith formation to do a tour of our sacristy. So since there's no faith formation today, I thought, well, let's just do it virtually. So here we go. By the way, here we're in the, the sanctuary of our altar. Behind me you see the tabernacle where Jesus Christ is. That's where the Eucharist is kept. Uh, our, behind there is an archway. It's, it's kind of blinking in the video, but it's, it's rather, looks pink. We like to call it rose, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but we change the colors of the arch in our community here at St. Anne, uh, depending on the time of the year. So let's go to the sacristy, shall we? Follow me. When we first walk into the sacristy from the sanctuary, we have these items here. Altar servers are very familiar with it. These are our processional handles. So they come right off and then they return them back into their space. We uh, ideally would like to use wax candles, but we find that sometimes, and if you're an altar server, maybe you've done this, you've held a, a thing like this. And guess what happens when that happens? Yes, a lot of things spill. So these are actually oil candles. Let's reduce that. We also have a crucifix, our processional cross is another name for it. Uh, we got that a few years ago, and then another one right around the corner. I don't know if you can see this, but it's, it's a little older. Let me pull it out here. This is the uh, older one, and it goes all the way to the ground, where this one here does not go all the way to the ground. It comes off kind of like the, kind of like the candles do. This is much heavier, so depending on the altar server, Depending on the altar server and their size and their ability to lift weights, uh, we choose different crucifixes and processional cross. Further on, this is the sacristy itself. So for, but behind me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk clockwise through the sacristy. And uh, Father Argy, who's doing the camera work, may have some help with questions if I forget something. Uh, but let's take a look. So come on around the corner here. This is a unique to us. We have a a magnetic board that has a kind of a diagram of our church and if the minister wants to uh, like a uh, a chalice minister an extraordinary minister of holy communion wants to be a chalice minister they just put their name right there and it sticks so that's sandra if we put her there etc and we have all the different names we have in our sacristy little medals for the altar server so they would wear these similarly our readers would wear a medal as well designating them as the reader and we put notices up, but here we have a notice. This is a little old now, but it says, all ministers must wash their hands prior to serving mass, which you know what we should be doing anyway. We don't need the coronavirus to remember that, but that is something that we do as well. Father Bill? Yes. How about that small thing right there in the corner? Oh, yeah, this right here. Great question. This is a holy water font. I wonder if there's something in there. Let's check it out. Is there anything in there? Nope, there's nothing in there. Well, why is there nothing in there? Well, normally we would put water in there and bless it. Ideally, we try to get distilled water because it's nice and clean, but we're not using this anymore because we have a baptismal font for full immersion in the entrance of the church, and so we don't need this reservoir. People can come to the church and just scoop water right out of the baptismal font. So this now has been retired for the time being. Great question. There'll be more other questions, I'm sure. Over here is the area of, I would consider the domain of our sacristan. Sacristans are the people that work in the sacristy. And something unusual is we have a computer in the sacristy for us that allows us to schedule ministers, uh, lay ministers, and us to be priests. We have a liturgy schedule that we use here. And if someone uh, needs a substitute, they can go online and get a substitute, etc. Uh, sometimes I forget to print out something, maybe something for liturgy, and so I have a printer hooked up and I can actually use my laptop to where I always sleep print to this which has saved my bacon many times. We have cabinets as well so I've divided them up into different languages. Over here is our English books. We have for example a lectionary. A lectionary is the book that has all the readings. This one is for the Sunday masses and this is what the readers use. It's pretty thick. It's not the whole Bible though it's selected readings. 
another thick book is the Roman Missal. The Roman Missal is the book that Father R.G. and I, we priests, use to celebrate Mass. And this is all the words of the text and tell us what to pray. And it's heavy. So, sometimes we have altar servers and they're holding this and we'll just say, again, some are not as strong as others and they're holding it for a long time. We have up here excerpts from the Roman Missal and it's just the presidential prayers, we call them, the opening and closing prayer. So, for example, this last week, we had the, or actually today, we're recording this on the fourth Sunday of Lent, the opening prayer and the prayer after communion, also called the collect. So we collect our prayers together and the prayer after communion. That's that. Always got to be mindful of making sure the, uh, the ribbons are kept clean. One of my little secrets that I use, I always put the ribbons, and I don't know what Father RG does, but I put the ribbons on the outside that I'm needing. The ones that I don't need, I put them down here. I don't know. Is that what you do, Father RG? Yeah. Oh, okay. Pretty much. All right. Uh, other lectionaries, if you look up here, there's other lectionaries, and they are for the daily masses or other things like masses for, uh, say, a wedding or funeral. We also have this object, a strange object. This is not found in every church, but we use this because we, at the mass, we enthrone the gospel. So let me get that out. This is the book of the gospels. The gospel is so important in the liturgy that it gets processed around, and then we have a book just of the gospels that are that are in the mass. So here, take a look at this. Here is the book. It has some uh, a copy of an illuminated manuscript right here, and we have the texts again. A ribbon. Here's a little inside scoop. This ribbon every year gets trimmed because it keeps fraying. <laughs> anyway, so what we do when we go to the altar, we take this book and it gets enthroned right in. On top of the altar, and we need this thing to keep it steady and upright. The wonderful thing about this is you can't even see this from the pews because it's plastic, it's plexiglass. I don't know, hopefully you can see that yourself here. All right. We also have a binder that we use for special uses. Um, in this case, we have the penitential act the priest may use and the prayers of the faithful for the reader and for the presider. We put them in plastic. Sometimes the angle gets funky at mass, so we have to move it around because the light shines on the plastic. And just like always, we need to put things away. Oh, by the way, here's the, the current weekday uh, lectionary we're using. So we try to put everything away. This is me, but trying to get, do order. Things that we are using most frequently are at the bottom. Things we use the least frequently are at the top. And what are those books right there, Father Bill? These up here? This one up. Oh, yep. So I already mentioned these, but we have other books, like for example, The Ritual for Weddings. So again, we have all the texts of the weddings. The nice thing about this one is it's in English on one side and Espanol on the other side. A lot more liturgical books are coming out that way. Thank God. Uh, an unusual thing, we have the little pamphlet for uh, Eucharistic prayers for masses with children, so we sometimes use those when we have children. And I'm thinking about using this on uh, this coming Wednesday. We'll see. The school mass, yeah. It does, in, it does involve some interaction with the, the children, which is kind of tricky, especially if we're doing it virtually. Mm -hmm. but anyway, they're adapted. Uh, we have a book for Christian funerals. So this is uh, has all the texts and all the prayers for funerals. Something I use for funerals, this is, uh, not everybody does this, I have a binder that has the same things that that funeral book has in it, but there's so many like options you can choose. I sometimes get nervous at mass and I go to the wrong option. This allows me just to go one card and next card and that's just one less thing I have to worry about. And all the options are in this uh, box of cards. People, when they uh, come to prepare for a funeral, they tell us what they want. And all the options are in these little binder in this box here. I just put them in the, uh, the three ring binder there. We have another another one of these books for matrimony. I guess one of them must be mine. I must have forgotten to take it home. I don't know. Uh, Book of blessings. So people often guess what the most popular thing is that we bless next to water. And if you said a house. You're probably right. 
So we might take this or shorter version. Father RG, you might have one of these, a small one in your car. Mm -hmm. I do too. But this is the ritual edition, meaning it's supposed to be intended for in uh, services like masses. Mm -hmm. um, I have here an example. This is the blessing for, uh, let's see, for the nativity. If you have a nativity, you can nativity scene during Christmas. You can use that. We have a blessing of trees. We have trees in our sac or our, uh, nave and in the sanctuary. And so we bless the trees with these rituals. Um, it's also helpful sometimes in the prayers of the faithful. I need to come up with something Father RG does as well. This is a little aid, this little um, soft-backed book that has examples of prayers of the faithful that we can use for specific Sundays. And just as I did with funerals, we also bought something for weddings when there's, again, lots of options for uh, couples. Uh, we use a three-ring binder with a card system that they can use so that we can offer their celebration of the Mass and matrimony and dignity, and we won't be so confused ourselves. Uh, the rest of the things there are like a lectionary for children and a Bible and this one right here. This is pastoral care for the sick. When people get sick, we anoint them. And they have to be seriously sick. It's not like I got a runny nose. It's not like I got a little cut. It's like they're going to have surgery because they're a major thing. And so there is a ritual that we have. And Father Arjun, you I think also have one of these in your car. Yeah. I have one as well. But we have one here just in case we need one. While well, after Mass, someone needs assistance. We actually encourage them to come see us right after Mass. And we're happy to have them sit down on one of these chairs and we'll anoint them. And this is the ritual for that. Oh, one last thing. Uh, every year, this one's out of date, but every year we give this to our readers. It's a, uh, and our, our um, yeah, the readers, this is our reader book. And it gives an example of the readings. And I don't know if you can see it, but some things are bolded, which helps the reader know what to emphasize. And there's also then at the very bottom of the page, there's uh, a little description about what they're reading. It's important that they know what they're saying when they read. Now that's the English, so there are analogous things, or similar things, on the Spanish. Not as many, but similar. So, I mentioned the lectionary, this is the Spanish lectionary, leccionario, and there are several of them, there's one up here. But this has the readings in Spanish. You can use the ribbon to open it up. This would be the, the third week of Lent. And, Remember that book of the Gospels? Well, wow, the book of the Gospels in Spanish is pretty something. It's something else. It's amazing. It's very large, just like the other one. The binding is incredible. But if I open it up, take a look at how they do their lettering. It's almost like illuminated manuscripts. They'll have some decorative words here. En aquel tiempo, Jesús levantó a los ojos al cielo y dijo. We can keep going, though. There's some here. I can, oh, look at this one. It's got decorations all over here. It's pretty cool. And on occasion, let's see here, they'll have, hey, Our Lady of Guadalupe, they'll have images that are not found in the other miss, or other uh, book of the Gospels. But this is a pretty amazing book of the Gospels. So that's that. And it also fits in that same plastic container. We can put it down there on that. So when we enthrone the Gospel book on the altar, we can put that on there. The... The Missal in Spanish has just been revised, so it matches identically, almost page by page, the Missal in English. And of course, that hopefully is the same in Latin. So it's called Missal Romano. And again, it's, it's a book, lots of tabs, and, and looks really impressive. It's very heavy. But it also, so here, let's go forward. As the prayers that the priest says, here is uh, next week, if we're doing a Mass in Spanish, the opening prayers, and there's parts were called the chant. I have not yet got to the point of chanting in Spanish. I can do the English, but I'm a little afraid in Spanish. I don't know, Father RG, have you done that yet? Because I'm yeah, I'm I, I, I chant sometimes. Oh, the Spanish? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, great, and it's also just written. Too. Yeah, and most of the time, the presidential prayers I chant them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. presidential prayers I try as well. That, those are easier mm -hmm. than uh, the other. Again, I'm sometimes thinking about. Uh, well, in fact, this brings up the whole idea of what I call the dominoes of liturgy. When one thing goes goofy or something strange happens, a distraction, mm -hmm. that causes us to kind of 
lose our concentration and then mm. we forget something and then after we forget something then we're thinking about oh what we forgot and it just dominoes and other things happen at least they do for me i don't know if that happens for you yeah, yeah. okay uh same thing we have a binder it's in spanish for the prayers of the faithful uh, another type of readings that we may need to do that are uh, for the reader and for the presider we do them in different colors there's a white one here and a purple up here we have some other ritual books that for baptism again i mentioned that some of these books are now being done bilingually which is excellent so here's an example of the baptism ritual the the uh, universal prayer or the prayer of the faithful it's in english on this side and spanish on this side which is a real help one book and it's a real help for us like myself who are not fluent spanish speakers if i get lost at all i can see oh what i'm doing in english and it gives me confidence and then i'm less stressed and everything goes better we recently did the same for the book for funerals the order of christian funerals that blue book we have in the other cabinet here it is again but now in english and in spanish so these are the readings and prayers so father of mercies and god of all consolation or in spanish Padre de misericordia y Dios de todo consuelo. consuelo. So, yeah, it's, it's a real help. We have also a bunch of binders we've done for special masses when we have bilingual celebrations. We try to do bilingual masses on Holy Days of Obligation, so sometimes we'll create binders for them. And here's the, oops, here's the, uh, the binder falling apart here. It's not in the... The three rings but this is the set of texts that we use for the actual mass itself it's hard to do mass with two missiles on the altar uh, for me i get confused are you getting it? i get confused a lot i don't know uh, put that in there yeah, put these away oh, let's do this let's keep everything orderly right So at the top of this shelf, you'll see there's a lectionario way up there. Well, it's up there because we're not using that one, and I don't want the readers or the, the sacristans to get confused. So that is, those are the, the covers for those. Down here we have long covers. How many of you at home have a drawer this long? I don't know anybody. It, it only happens actually in churches, I think. But that is probably like, I don't know, five foot long. Shall we look and see what's in there? What could what could necessitate a drawer that long? Oh yes, stoles. Well, when we celebrate mass, uh, when sometimes we con celebrate mass, or there's other rituals we may uh, offer that just have a stole. Like for example, here's a stole that I purchased in Israel many years ago, and it's purple. I hope it comes out purple for you. Sometimes the recording looks makes it look blue. Um, here is. Here's one that is green, and this is intended during ordinary time that the, uh, the priest can wear this if he's not the presider. Here's, here's a cool thing, check this out. It's green, right? Or is it red? Or is it green? Do you see, it's double-sided. So it helps us, depending on what's going on, to use this for more than one occasion. So there's a whole bunch of them here, and that's why we have a long drawer. Other reasons? We need to have a whole stockpile of towels. What is that about? Well, on the Easter vigil, typically, we have people getting baptized, and there's lots of water going on. So we needed a place to store the towels, and here they are. From smaller towels, like hand towels, to more like a bath towel that you'll see in your own, in your own bathroom. Let's see also we have altar cloths we actually have colored skirts for altars we our new altar is a little bigger than the old one so we use this now for the credence table which we'll talk about some other time we have altar cloths here for that now altar cloths go on top of the altar that's the word yeah okay and then some smaller ones as well and we have a phone in here in case we need to call somebody there could be an emergency or someone needs uh, some help. Sometimes I call from this phone to ask something from somebody. It's interconnected to our whole system. Uh, Father RG uh, could call from here and he could call the office if he wanted to. 
It's part of our junk drawer here, junk stuff. Right? Let's see, what else we got? Oh, this. What is this? This is the yellow rope. What's the yellow rope about? This is we ring our church bell with this. I don't know, should I do it? I mean, do it. Should, I do it? should we open the door so people can hear? Why don't we just be quiet, maybe they can hear it. Yeah. Ready? mass right now so I don't want to alert anybody like what's going on a lot of people like to hold this rope and pull it it's literally there's a hole in the ceiling here check this out over here it goes straight up it's probably about 50 feet up I climbed all the way up there when we first built the church it's very scary up there because it's way up there and it literally is a direct line to the bell so that's why I have to pull it there's very few levers or pulleys involved uh, that's a that's an amazing thing. And we don't even know, by the way, how old the bell is. When we took it off the previous church, the bell had had some writing on it, but it's, it's so old that we can't even tell. The writing is indescriptible, un, unreadable, that's the word. Uh, in here we have a first aid kit. Everybody needs to have a first aid kit, so we have that. Oh, here's something kind of funny. Uh, you may not know this, but we have uh, the use of incense, and we'll get to those things, but we have to get their incense. is actually like a, a little pellet of resin from um, a tree and often you use a, was it a pestle and a bowl you crush them and so that we can help burn them but we decided a parishioner I should say decided to get a Starbucks coffee grinder and we just put them in here I can already smell the incense can't you yeah and mm -hmm. we just put them in here and we it's like we're grinding coffee and we grind the incense <laughs> the incense uh, with this Some incense smells great, and some other, mm, not good. No bueno. During the Mass, we have a need to uh, use vessels for water. We have a bowl, a, a lavabo, and a, a pitcher. When we have the priest needs to get his hands washed, we put, hopefully, hot water. By the time we use it, it's warm, and it will pour it in this way. We have things called cruets. Here's one cruet. We put the water and wine in this, or just the water, depending on our situation, because we have a, a larger container for the wine when we have large masses, but we just put the little tip there. Kind of looks like a, 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 a thing for vinegar sorba, but this is called a cruet, and we use these currently at mass. People often ask me, what kind of wine do we use for mass? You ready? Here we go. Chateau de Ferre. How's that? I, I don't know French, so... I don't know, too. Yeah, I don't know. But we'll pretend like we said it right. But it's from Mont La Salle. Uh, it's considered altar wine. And it's 12% by volume. It says approved for sacramental use. Many wines can be used, but they, have, they can't have extra things in them. Like you can't put like peach flavoring in them and etc. We used to have, when I first got here, this same wine, but it was fortified with brandy, which is still fruit of the vine, because that's, requ that's the requirement. Fruit of the vine only. And brandy... Um, added to this made this 18% oh my gosh that was pretty tough when I was at Mount Angel Seminary Father RG when you were there they I believe they used that um, that style of wine that's really really strong and you got to be careful when you're drinking it because you don't want to cough when you drink it because well you put that together it's not a good thing at mass we also have an ablution bowl here we put this water in here so at the end of mass Sometimes the priest, or certainly the lay ministers, then wash their fingers because they've been holding the host. And uh, other things, these are backups up here. Uh, we have lemon juice. What are we doing with lemon juice? Why would we, we need lemon juice? Father Archie, you, I know you like hot water sometimes with yeah. some lemon. Yeah. That's not what this is going on here. This is for when we use oils or other situations where our hands are very dirty. And so we use lemon juice with water and soap, and sometimes even uh, lemons themselves. So that's that. Let's see here. Oh, let's keep going here. Uh, more hand towels. You just can't have enough hand towels. <laughs> so when I wash my hands, or Father Argy washes his hands, the altar server has this on his or her arm like this, and then we take it off and we dry our hands with this. Oh, here's a junk cabinet. Yeah, everybody's got one of these at the house, right? We have pens and papers and stuff. 
What in the world? Is, what is that? This is a necessary thing in a sacristy. It's a doorstop. <laughs> a little drama, just a little, not a lot. Uh, a sink. This is a, a regular sink that just goes into the uh, the regular septic system, and uh, we use this to thoroughly wash our vessels. But but that's not the first place it goes. We actually do a basic purification at mass, and then they don't come here yet. They come over to here, this sink. This sink, we actually put a lid on it so that nobody mistakes this for something else. Do you know what this is called? This is called a sequarium. The lid just covers it so that nobody mistakes the two. The, the drain here, here you can get a little closer, the drain here you can see goes like any other drain, but it doesn't go into the septic system. This goes straight into the earth in front of the church. So we will take the bowls, let's say, that may still have some crumbs of the Blessed Sacrament. Hopefully not, but then just in case, we'll get some water on it. That's what the sink here is for. And then we'll pour it down here. Also, in case a situation arises where a host gets spit up by somebody, we've had this in some nursing homes, then we put it in a special container Another ablution bowl looks like this. And we will put water in here. With the water, then we'll place the, the host that's been spit up. And we'll just set it over here. Usually, I instruct the people, there's no rule for this building. I instruct them to put it here and put a note on it so nobody messes with it. And the idea is that the host will dissolve and then we can put it down the sequarium. So that's what's going on there. Another thing is this. This is called an aspergillum. You ready? That's cool. Oh, I just missed. But anyhow, <laughs> we use this to bless people. And this is just regular water that we have, we have blessed as well. And sometimes we have to also pour that down this aquarium because after a while, sometimes it gets a little bit dirty. Everybody should have a Brita filter. What's the Brita filter about? Well, when we are using water, which you saw in a cruet, we drink that. And well, our water's okay, but not, I would say great. So we filter the water. So anything that gets drank, we use this water here. It's much better, don't you think, about RG? Yeah. Yeah. And then under the sink, everybody's gotta have a place where they have their cleaning tools. That's in their garbage. Almost every American, you know, kitchen has a garbage almost underneath there. So that's what's that. Not very exciting. Let's see here. Then we start getting to the drawers. Okay, these drawers. What we have here are, are called corporals. The word corpus, I don't know if you can hear that, but that means body. We actually open this up very carefully on an altar. And this is intended for the Eucharist. When we celebrate Mass, we put this on the altar and everything that we put on this, this corpus is intended to be used when we bless and consecrate things. So, for example, the bread and the wine, we place them on here, and then we ask the Holy Spirit to come upon them, and we offer the, the blessing prayer, the consecration. And it's where our intent is the things that are on the corpus. And then we always, well, when we're done, we try to fold it up very gently. Why would we do that? I mean, why not just go like your bed sheets, right? Well, what's on here, possibly? Possibly, there's still remnants of the body and blood of Christ on here. So we don't just want to throw them on the ground. And in fact, when we're done with these, after we fold it up, the sacristans get this, and they bring it out in this aquarium so that we can make, be mindful of the Blessed Sacrament. We're not going to put that down the drain. These may get eventually laundered uh, using our regular sink, uh, and then we dry them here, but they always get first... Uh, washing in this aquarium. We also have a whole bunch of things called purificators. They're smaller, smaller cloths that we use to wipe the chalices. I'm asking our ministers to have these uh, with them as they give out the hosts. In case when they give out the host and they put on the tongue of a person and they touch their tongue, well, we, nobody wants to then pick up the next, or be given the next host with the slide from the previous person. So we wipe off, and that's what this is about. All right, and there's some more, some backups. 
And some more towels. We have some uh, microfiber cloths. Oh, here is a fun place. Kids will like this one. This is the area where I was talking about incense. Here is what incense looks like. This is actually frankincense. I think he even says it. Can you see that? Frankincense. It's kind of a granule. And we have others. Damascus rose. I don't know if you can see it, but they're... Can you hear it? They're like granules. Another one they call Queen of Heaven. These are named because of uh, just the smell. But again, they're granules. Those don't uh, burn really well. What we need... Let's see if this is in here. No, it's over here. This is called a boat. A boat has the crushed part of the cremain, or the, uh, the uh, um, incense. And we use this and we put it in a thurible, which we haven't seen yet. The thurible has in it charcoal. Take a look at the charcoal here. We have one here. It's kind of like an instant light charcoal. If you light it, it will light very quickly. And we have a whole bunch more. There's a whole box of this. We only have one more to go. Now I'll get my hands dirty. I guess it's time to wash my hands. Let's see before we do that. Candles. You know those candles that you've seen and other candles? We need to we need uh, wicks for them. Here's some long wicks for something called hey, Lucifer. Lucifer. Yeah, what's that about? Oh, stay tuned. And these are used. These are little um, balsa wood sticks we use when people go and light candles inside the church for their prayers. These are called followers. They follow the candle down. As the candle burns, this follows it down. It prevents it from spilling all over the place. They're pretty cool. There's all kinds of sizes and all different shapes. So, there's that. And another kind of a clean drawer. We have, if there's any bugs we need, we have a bug spray. And we have uh, those oil candles that you saw, I mentioned. We have gallons of oil, special oil for those. And we use devices like here's a small version of the oil altar pure is what it says it's just a, a certain kind of oil uh, that we then pour inside those candles to, so we don't get make a mess all right well, it's time to wash my hands now during this time of the coronavirus how long should you wash your hands well here's what i think wash your hands and say to our father while you're doing it and don't do it real fast Let's see. Alright. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. Amen. And you know what? By the time I'm done, the water's hot. Almost too hot. Everything's high tech here. I'm trying to make sure that, and this is real popular now, all the uh, paper towel dispensers are, are uh, touchless. And in fact, if you ever go to the restroom in the restaurant, make sure if you've done this, grab the handle with the, uh, the cloth and then you can throw it away. Hands free. And then, yeah. then... Oh, up here! Yeah. We haven't gotten to these cabinets. Yep. Should we start this side or that side? What do you think? We're done with this. We've done those? Yeah. We haven't done this, have we? No. Okay. Look at that. So we have all kinds of bowls. Bowls used for the host at Mass. Here's a big one. This is for the presider. It's a patent bowl. This can hold several hundred hosts. We purchased some chalices. These are chalices, small chalices. We'll show you big chalices. These are also called communion cups, but small chalices. The interesting with these is uh, they are very lightweight, and that became a problem because if I touched them, they would tip over. And have I done that? Yeah, I have. So we uh, took them apart, this little nut down here, took it off. And one of our parishioners figured out how to put some weight in the bottom part of this. So they go down, and they don't, they don't tip over so much, and they're actually more hefty to, uh, to hold. This is called a flagon, where we put the wine. Remember the, cru the cruets we said, we talked about? Well, the cruets are if we only need a little bit of wine, but 
for mass, we have, have to bring forward a, quite a bit of wine, and this holds more than we need, so that's perfect. These are backup chalices. These are the chalices we used to use. Now, these are nice, but one of the issues I had with them is they're hollow, and notice how unstable they are. Yeah, that was a problem. So, and we have one of our other flagons, a different size, a little smaller. Again, used for wine only. Sometimes we put candles up here. Here, we don't have everything in here, but this is where our hosts are, the, the bread that we use and bring forward. We buy them in boxes, for example. Here's one of the boxes. And in this box, ooh, it's not gonna open. Well, we'll, we'll uh, oh, here we go. Inside this box is a bunch of hosts this size here. We'll put them in a Tupperware, so they, Tupperware container. Or this is a sterile, sterile light container so that people can get a sense of how big they are. We use these at daily mass and uh, in small spaces. This is also the host we use for adoration. This is perfectly in our, uh, our monstrance, the thing that holds the Eucharist during adoration. I already mentioned, oh, right here. Oh, here's a good thing. So we have also other containers with hosts in, in them. And we have a wonderful parishioner who actually counts them out so that if we run short or we need to get just 50 of them, they're pre-counted for us. This is our thing, not everybody does this. And then all I have to do is open them up, the sacristan doesn't have to count them, open it up and pour it in one of the, uh, the patents and we're good. Then it gets brought forward at mass to be blessed. We have one for 100. Here is, we also have a round container here for the larger hosts that we use at Sunday Mass. And you can see there's perforations on them that allows us to break them. Otherwise, we've got a real mess in our hands. But again, we want to keep them, you know, so they don't go stale. Just like anything, you know, bread can go stale. Um, oh, here, when we buy incense, it comes usually in a container. Here's a, a box of some typical incense. And it's uh, wrapped because you can imagine the incense gets all over the place otherwise. And you can't even fit it in there, can we? So we'll do this. Put it right there. I think I already kind of alluded to here. This is, these are our towels to clean the vessels. And then while we're waiting for things to happen, we have our chair. Here's one of our presider's chairs. Uh, this was handmade by Father Peter O'Brien, one of our former priests here. And when we, we use it at Mass, but we have to put little, take a look at this. This is new, we put these little things on here, little, uh, Markers, or uh, what do you call these things? Uh, a protector. But notice right between the protector is the mark. I don't know if you can see this, but this mark is because we bump this up against the wall and damage the wall. So now we can do this and it's that. That's good. Now here's an interesting thing. So when we uh, get vested, we need to be able to be seen. And uh, hey, there's Father Archie. So this helps us. There he is. Awesome. This helps us to be able to see uh, if we put our clothes on right. Here's something strange. I haven't told this to everybody, but I did a funeral not too long ago. I put on the white vestment for the funeral. It was inside out the whole time. I didn't even look in the mirror. Nobody noticed. I, it was, the collar didn't work for some reason. I would, couldn't figure it out. And it was only after the mass was over, I realized what I had done. Had I used this mirror, I would have been in better shape, huh? But you know what? Nobody noticed but me. Let's keep going. Over here, sometimes we'll use sets of candles that have threes. You can see it right there, there's one, one of the set of threes. When it's a solemnity, we use these. There's different kinds of celebrations of the Mass. There's a ferial day, which means a free day. There's an optional memorial, another uh, saying, oh, there's a, a saint that we like, we want to remember them. There's an obligatory memorial, maybe it's an important saint that we should remember. And maybe it's something even more important and it becomes a person or an event, we call it a feast day. And then above that is a solemnity. And so on solemnities, we pull out all the stops and we use these candles both on each side of the altar, so a total of six. Moving on. In this room is a very special one for us. Not everybody has a room like this. This room is the flower room where, where we you know, produce the things for the environment of our church. So we have wicker baskets, we have more vases than you can shake a stick at. Here's some sticks right here. Uh, we have their own sink and vases. It's just was something they requested and it allowed them to do their work well and 
I must tell you, they knock it out every single weekend. It's so beautiful. We don't have to de decorate much because they do such a good job. We'll turn those lights off. Moving on. You still with us? Yep. Okay. Very good. I don't want to bore anybody, mm -hmm. but here we are. This is, we'll call this like, in sports, there's a locker room, right? And they have a place they can sit. Well, this is like this priest locker room. And in here, the priests and the deacons put on their vestments. So one of the most important and first things we put on when we come in here is an alb. Here's an alb. The word alb comes from the Latin albus, which means white. And it signifies our baptism. Altar servers wear this in our church. And we wear this. This is the first garment to put on. There's another alb. But you notice there's a string here. This is called a cincture. And we put them in different colors. They can always be white, but we like to follow the liturgical color. So I wear this. It's Lent right now as we're recording, so I'll also wear... Not that. Let's put that here. This is a purple chasuble. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get it in the light there. So there's all kinds of different styles for chasubles. I happen to purchase this whole set. Purple is a sign of repentance and of mourning in a, uh, in a sense when there's a funeral. Purple is a color possibly for a funeral, but it's for Lent and Advent. And for Advent, I have a special one I got. It's purple, but it probably tell you, maybe why it's possibly Advent. We have candles on it. The candles reminding us of the four candles of the Advent wreath. On great feast days, Easter, Christmas, white can be a color that we can wear. This is a white. This last weekend was Latare Sunday, which is the fourth Sunday in Lent. And instead of wearing purple, we can wear rose. This is a rose vestment. This one, I bought this discounted, and it was actually too big for me, so I got somebody to, to shorten it up for me. When we celebrate a feast of someone who has died, like a martyr for the faith, we use red. I have another red signature for it. And we wear this on days of like the passion of the Lord. And then there's green. I'm gonna take this is Father Argy's. He's got a really nice green vestment. Take a look at this. Green is for a sign of life. It's the ordinary time, we call it. And the word ordinary doesn't mean like, oh, it's ho-hum. It means it's counted. Ordinal is the Latin root. The, the days of uh, ordinary time are like the second week of ordinary time, the third week, and we count them. Up to like 30, almost 35. Let's see. Well, the RG and I both, we have some vestments that we wear that will match completely. These are the diocese uh, chasubles. So when we get together at the Chrism Mass or here for like an Easter Mass or some celebration that will allow for white or gold, we match. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna show you another one cool one that Father Archie's got. Take a look at this. Saint Father Archie, what's the significance of this? Saint Anthony. Um, saint Anthony was the pa uh, is the patron saint of my home parish, and my first assignment as a priest. Mm, okay. Saint nice. Anthony's in Tigard. Nice. I was a, a high school student at Saint Anthony in Tigard, and that's my confirmation name because of that church. So we have something in common. Yep. Um, oh, over here. That's the priest stuff. Oh, one more thing, the priest stuff here is. There's something like this. Take a look at this. This is the. I don't know if it's coming through or not. It's kind of dark. The lighting is a little different. Maybe I'll we'll bring it out here. Maybe a little better here. Yeah, that's better. Even lighting. This is called a coat. Looks like a cape, doesn't it? Well, because it is a cape. And I don't even know why it's called a coat versus a cape. So there we go. If you know, let me know. We have a red one as well. And do you have a humor opening over here? Is that what's this over here? Well, we have one over here too. This is a, called a humoral veil. This one's a rather long one. So when we're processing with the Blessed Sacrament, the humoral veil is just a big, long cloth, right? Look at that, huh? It's upside down too. Let's do it right side up. Big, long cloth. But interestingly enough, it's got pockets in it. Like, what? Yeah, look at that. There's a pocket over there, and there's a pocket over here. What do we do with it? Well, I'll just put it on real briefly here. I might have to look at the mirror just to get it straight. Oh, gotta 
I'd have a, a chasuble or my album normally. But since we're just taking a tour, I got my hands in my pockets there. Don't put your hands in your pockets. Do you ever hear that? Well, here we need to put our hands in these pockets so that we might take the Blessed Sacrament on the monstrance and lift it up. And it does a couple things. It keeps it uh, clean. When the bishop is around, he has some of these, uh, has a couple of these. So if someone's holding the, the processional cross or his uh, mitre, things like that. So that's what's going on with this. Now let's see, let's see if I can hold it up again. This is a test. Do you like folding your clothes? I don't know, not everybody does. I know at my, my house, I have a set of clothes just piled up on my bed. Guess what I gotta do when I get home? Mm -hmm. Let's see there. Put that in there like this. Let's see, there we go. Yep. I'm, already, I'm already having difficulties. Let's do that. Okay, I did mention there's another side here and it's for a deacon. The deacon wears what's called a dalmatic. A dalmatic. It kind of looks like a chasuble, doesn't it? Except for, let's go back out here. Except it's got sleeves. Look at that. It's got a sleeve here and a sleeve here. It's like a big shirt. But what we try to do is try to match. How's that? Do they match? This is the chasuble. That's like a big poncho. And this is the dalmatic. By the way, the, the word chasuble in Spanish gives us an understanding of the theology of a chasuble. Chasuble mean in Spanish is casuya. The word casa is in there, house. When I was ordained, I remember very specifically being told when, being, when this was being vested on me, receive the weight of the church. Like the church is a house. There we go. So the deacon also has green... He has different styles. Here's another green one. He has red. And he has purple. And he even has rose. Look at rose. There's kind of like pink. We priests have some issues with pink. <laughs> so we call it rose. But it sort of matches. This is more rose. This is rose. That's more pink. Yeah. Father Bill? Yes. Do you mind explaining how, uh, how do we wear our stoles, um, a priest and deacon, the oh, difference? Yeah. Great. Okay, we'll use that. Let's use the red because that kind of pops. I'll use it. So a stole. In Roman times, a stole was a sign of like a, a, a judge. And we kiss the cross and we put it on, right, signing that we respect who Jesus is and we love him. And we hold it like this, straight down. So in Roman times, they would wear stoles. And we borrowed the church then kind of Christianized or baptized some of the garb of the day. So this is the presider that uh, they as a judge in a court, or in this case, a priest at mass. So, let's see here. Got to put it away, right? There we go. And let's see, where the deacon. So he's, here's a green one. So Father R.G. and myself were first ordained deacons and then made priests. And we have a permanent deacon currently, Deacon Bob. And he's a real, a real help. See, it kind of looks like... Uh, well, we have the same kind of deal going on here. There's two sides, but there's a chain. What's the chain about? They put it on like so, sideways, like that. There you are. What do you think, huh? A deacon is always a deacon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Once a deacon, always a deacon. Okay, now i got to put this back in some order as well. That's that. Let's move on. More, we, I call this the priest cubby area. Not every sacristy has this, but this is where we put our books that we use. And uh, in case we need to clean something, we have our stall. <laughs> an important book we don't often talk about, you probably never hear about, it's called an ordo. And that ordo is intended to tell us what are we supposed to be doing this week. So, if we look carefully, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent when we're recording. The color is rose, or it could be violet. Tells us something about what we can be doing. There's scrutinies that could be done here. Tells us what the scriptures are. And gives a summary of the readings. So tomorrow, we have this. It's another Lenten weekday. It's St. Terribius uh, Magrovejo, and he's a bishop. It's a lowercase m, which means it's an optional memorial. Father Argy's doing the Mass, so he'll be uh, 
offering it with violet. And I believe that means that a funeral mass can happen during that time as well. There's little codes V, uh, V1 and V2, the special code for the book. Anyway, it's called an Ordo for the Order of Mass. And they're different div for regions. So this is good for Diocese, uh, Archdiocese of Portland, Anchorage, Seattle, Baker, Boise, uh, Fairbanks, Juneau, Spokane, and Yakima. So what may happen in one diocese sometimes doesn't happen in another diocese. Check it out when you see liturgical differences. It could be because there's different governance by bishops in that area. Let's keep going. Oh, I almost forgot. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Another junk drawer, but this is an important junk drawer. As a nerd, boy, this is an important one, because what's in here, for example, is our wireless microphones. Here's Father RG's with his microphone. And it, we have batteries, there's a lot of batteries here. And this is where we put these on. In case they, the headphones break, we have purchased some extras. There are, here's one that we started to pull out. You can see there's extras. Right. Batteries, got a battery. We have some keys here. Like This is a, an Allen wrench. This is a key that gets us in and out of the bathroom hallway. Other things we have, like for example, we have our handheld mic, one for the choir typically. And I always like to go in here and see if the batteries are in here. Oops, they are. Uh-oh. Let's take the batteries out because we should, they might drain. So put them on our side. And we just close it up like that. Oh, we have other things like battery testers. And we have boxes of spare parts. I mean, look at this. We have boxes of cables and spare parts. That's it for that drawer. When we have funerals, there's certain things. There's a This is called a pall. It's a big cloth that goes over the casket. We have a vestment that matches it, and uh, that was the vestment that I had on inside out one time. But this is the pall that goes in the casket and other items. Uh, security bags. When we collect money, we put them in security bags so nobody tampers with them, and then we can put them in our safe. And altar servers. So when we train altar servers, we have our altar server training here. Uh, sometimes, uh, I believe it's after they have served 20 times. The number keeps growing when I talk to the kids. But I believe it's 20 times, and we give them this special medal. Check this out. This is a St. Benedict medal. Can you see that? So altar servers that have served for a while get this medal. It's kind of our way of encouraging them. Now, if you want to be an altar server, let us know. Looking for a few good men and women. Keep going. Another cubby over here allows us to have and look at certain items. We have objects for baptisms, like we have cotton balls to, to dry our hands, all the readings for funerals, other things, baptismal candles. We buy these in bulk. So here's a, a baptismal candle. Let's take a look at one. This is like we call an unboxing on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> We're unboxing an, an, a baptismal candle. Can you get that? And this is what they use at a baptism. And they light it from the Easter candle. And we blow it out, wait till it dries, and we give this to them as a memento. They can put their name, the date, the church, and who that priest was or deacon. We're almost done. Almost done. Here we have more drawers for particular cloths for funerals. Put them over tables and such. And do I need to say why we need this for a funeral? I don't think so. We got a bunch of them. Let's take a look at the last thing here. Remember I talked about the locker room idea? The priest here about the locker room? Well, this is the locker room for our altar servers. Remember I talked about an alb? Let's just take an alb here. Here's an alb. We decided to get ones with hoods in them, but they don't need to have them. But this is an altar server alb for a very short altar server. We have tall and short altar servers. We have little kids and we have adults. Remember, it comes from the albus, the Latin word meaning white, which signifies our baptism. And I gotta make sure we put numbers on them. That's what it, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Wow, they're all in order. It's a miracle. It's also a miracle that they put them on hangers, too. Take a look at this. Over here, we have a whole bunch of cinctures. We have them for all the colors. 
of this season. I'd like to point out these things here. They're a little bit more special. Father RG has really been doing a lot of work with our altar servers. We have what's called a lead altar server. Those are the ones that are exemplary amongst the altar servers. And they've been with us for a while, so they wear this all the time. And they're really directing the other altar servers. Um, votive lights. There's a whole bunch of lights we, or candles we use when uh, people want to offer a prayer. There are these little containers, and they have a little light in them, or a candle. And they can come up and light them, and they last for about a, a day. Or in this case, 10 hours. Uh, that's where we store them. All these things. On an occasion, we don't have an altar server, and I have us get one of these. This is just a serving tray, so Father RG and I can have this on our credence table, put all that we need, and then just walk it over to the altar if we need to, um, and that's what that's about. There's something over here. Remember I used the word Lucifer earlier? These are called Lucifers. I'll just take this one. This is a Lucifer. It's intended to light our candles at church. Well. Lucifer means light. Lucifer, the devil, was himself an angel of light until he fell. And so, this is a little mechanical thing that pulls the wick out there. This is brand new. So remember that long wick that was we saw earlier? Someone's installed it here. Here's one that has been used. We just use it. The idea is you light the candle, and you're supposed to be able to pull this all the way in, and it goes inside here, and then it extinguishes it, and you can push it back out. So we remind everybody how to set the altar. This is how we, when we have altar servers do it, we do that. The altar servers also have their own uh, crosses. And so they wear these. And on occasion, they fiddle with them a little bit. And guess what happens? They break. So what do we do? We buy some new ones. <laughs> uh, these are our uh, chasubles and other investments that we don't have in our locker room at the priest because we don't use them that much. I'll just show you uh, one. This one weighs a lot. It's, it's actually, we sized it for another priest that was with us, Father Jose Manuel, and he's almost six foot tall. And I went, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? Because I barely fit in this, I swim in it. Father RG, I can't even use it. In fact, uh, I barely can use it. But I use this one as a cold winter day because it's really heavy. Something interesting in our uh, sacristy here is we have security cameras. Uh, security is very important and protection of children is very important. So we have a, a camera up here, and another camera over here near our clock. And this allows us, if there's a priest in the sacristy by himself or anybody else with a minor, this keeps everybody safe. And it lets us know uh, that uh, we're trying and striving for uh, the safety of children when we work in mass. Well, I want to thank you for being with us. Is there anything else that I may have forgotten? Maybe that those stuff that you have on the table. Oh, I forgot these, yes. Thank you. We're so close to being done, I almost forgot. So, when we do anointings for the sick, we use oil. When we offer confirmations, we use oil. When we dedicated this church, we used oil. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, where do we get the oil? So, we order them from the archdiocese, and we ask for different sizes. So, they come in big sizes. These are almost a year old, so take a look at this bottle, it's kind of warped. It's just because, you know, temperature changes, but it used to be filled. This is oil, and it says O-I on it. Oil of the infirm. That's what we use for anointing at the sick. This is, sac this is uh, sacred oil, or OS. This is for the catechumens, also known as the oil of catechumens. This is just olive oil. There's smaller bottles, the same idea. We haven't used these. They're all full. Notice that they're full and they're not warped. These are half empty and they're warped. Well, where did it all go? Well, we put it in containers like this. This is the container for the sacred chrism. I don't know if you can see that or not. And we put this in an ambry at another time when I do a tour of the church. Well, I'll take a look at that. But we fill that up. It has a smell to it. Here is, we bought multiple bottles this size a year or so ago for the dedication of our church because we pour it all over the altar. So anyway, this is the sacred chrism, and as I open it, it has a special smell. It's called balsam that's been added to it, just a little bit. It's one of those essential oils. This is used for baptisms, confirmations, dedication of church, and when Father Arjun and I were anointed, they were rubbed on our hands, sanctifying and uh, consecrating us for ministry. I think that's it now. Is there anything I missed? 
Chalices. Oh, we talked about chalices yet? No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Oh, okay, yes. Well, here, there's, here's Father Archie's chalice. We'll start with his, because there's one in the box here. Uh, this is not something that you just use at home. The guidelines are, it has to be something that is sturdy. We used to use crystal, so people can see what's inside, but I've had the experience, and maybe you have as well, that you've dropped something that's crystal. Guess what the crystal does? It breaks. So this is a chalice that Father Archie has. It's lined with gold. It's uh, gold-plated. I bet it's probably silver-plated here. On the bottom of it, let's see if I can get it right here. It has the name of R.G. in there, Father R.G. Garcia. Ordination to the priesthood, June 4th, 2016. And he has a complimentary patent, which has also on it the same information. So these go together. This is a set of chalice and patent, and they usually... Go like that. And then they put uh, other items like a pall or a big a square thing and then the other things over it possibly. Um, hey, what's, let's end with a boxing, an unboxing. This is, the, this is the internet, right? So a lot of unboxing videos. This is a chalice as well uh, that I received when I was ordained. The same idea, it's a little different style. It's a little more squattier, but uh, you can see the different sizes. These come in really tall or squatty ones. These are, it's kind of like a middle range. This one's pretty squatty, but again, it's uh, gold plated and silver plated on the outside. If you look carefully at this, this one's a little more, this is a replica of a medieval chalice. At the very bottom where my thumb is, we have images of the four gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's John the Eagle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matthew, I think. And then uh, this is Luke, I believe. Oh wait, maybe that's Luke, yeah, it's a bull. It's hard to see, there's a lion. On the bottom I also have an inscription, I don't know if you can see that, it has the name of my parents, in honor of George and Helene Holtzinger, my parents. Um, similar to this, we also, there's a matching patent bull, and on the bottom this has the similar kind of decorations. So who are those people, Father Bill? Oh, that's a good question. These are the 12 apostles. I don't know who's who exactly, I have not figured that out. I bet you have Peter's one with the keys. Let's see who has keys in here. Hmm. There's somebody with something that looks like keys. Let's keep going around. See if you catch it. <laughs> I don't think. There we are. There's a set of keys right there. There's Peter. Yeah. Thanks. I almost forgot about that. So they come in boxes. Oh, the RG has a protective uh, coat like this that they'll put in just so it stays in good shape. You can tuck it in here. The patent also has one as well. So when we put these away, they don't get scratched up a whole lot. These have to be specially cleaned, of course, because they hold a precious species. Well, since we started with a cross right there um, at our sanctuary, how about explaining that cross right there before we end? Okay. Well, at the end of a mass, typically the priest and hopefully the altar servers, when we are together, coming back here, we come and we bow to the cross, always being mindful of whenever we see the cross that we venerate. This particular cross was dedicated to Father Dan Kelly, who was the uh, architect or the, the priest that was here when building the previous church. So this cross is probably some um, 70 years old. It could be even older, but uh, it reminds us the the cost of true love. It's hand carved, and we have two of these, so we always have to have a cross, a crucifix, somewhere in a, a, a in a sacristy, and so that's the one we chose because it's so beautiful. Just take a look at it. Take a close look at that. You can see the hand carving, the wounds. You can even see the toenails. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, my friends, thank you for being with us, and I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions, you can always talk to Father RG. No, I'm just kidding. You can talk to either one of us. We're happy to be with you and, and answer any questions you might have uh, on the internet, whether it's Facebook or YouTube. Well, actually, YouTube, we're not having comments, but Facebook, when we post this, go ahead, and we'll uh, check that out and try to answer any further questions you have. Until then, and another time, God bless you.